Right, let's take off the masking tape. Steady, clumsy there. And then from this side. Before you apply the stickers, you might want to just make sure that things are as they should be here because depending on the width of them, like there's a little lump there, look where that glue was. The stickers are only going to um, amplify what's underneath them. Now, even the even the stickers on the uh, on the model don't line up that brilliantly. I don't know why that should be because that white line isn't opposite that white line. So I'm looking for a sticker where it goes diagonally, but it doesn't. Right, that slot goes over the uh, fin support. And I'll tell you what else I'll do here. Let's just keep things from moving about. I use my trusty, trusty blocks. But you're not going to line up that white stripe, so don't don't worry about it. The other thing you're not going to line up is the panel joins either. Line up the slot at the back. Line up the width. It does end short in the picture as well. I think the cockpit comes over the top. So. We've got that going pretty well, but as you can see, the lining up of the stripes is uh, not going to happen. See, if, you, if you brought it back on the back there, it's never going to line up on the front. So half and half, I guess you're not going to notice as it whizzes by. Okay, I've reverted to the other camera momentarily. Um, so what I'm doing, I've just run the knife blade down there just to take off the finest sliver, you see that, against the white, of transfer. It's easier to take it off than battling with a little bit sticking out. I've just got to come up here. For this obviously you need an incredibly sharp blade, brand new really. And then just along the top. Next piece is probably the nose cone going around. It goes that way because there's a headlight under the white stripe which fits under the nose and in light. So I'm going to try and line up the white stripe and see how the rest falls in. So it's quite long now that the white stripe does line up so I soon have a lining up white stripe and something happening funny on the bottom. Now I've had to switch cameras because my the memory is full on the other one and it's going to take 35 minutes to download so I thought I'd crack on with the my hat cam. There's a little dotted line in here which is the hinge line for the hatch. So my hatch line is there. So if I sort of the hole in the foam is a little bit too big to be honest. So we stick that over there like that. The magnet is now encased and hopefully hopefully that does fit down. Felt like it probably did. Install the vertical tail fin, okay. You'll find that sometimes it's a tight fit, so just squeeze it down like that, squeeze it down and squeeze that down and then narrower, but after a few seconds they go fat again, so you will fill it. Um, It seems a shame that you can't glue the fin to the foam really, doesn't it? It would be nice not to have had any, any plastic in there. Well, I'm wondering if I can't do something clever here. Yeah? 
at least between those two lugs pressing just hard enough to go through the um, paper and not into the foam too much okay I'll just stick that okay maybe sometimes the foam after the cutting process the foam shrinks back slightly from the um, actual plastic stickers printed face so you end up with a little hollow which means you've got to put a bit more glue in there otherwise it doesn't actually touch the surface okay let's just pop that in there and there and in there okay we'll let that set and we'll come back to it when it has you're nice and very nice if you're enjoying the video guys give it a thumbs up it helps with the youtube algorithm and helps promote it to other um, other non-aero modelers funny how i call this error modeling it kind of is isn't it okie dokie we're back so a little bit of time has passed, maybe three hours, so it should be dry. Let's just get the instructions back on the screen. And as you can see, I've reverted back to my original camera. Doesn't look too bad. Okay, so there are stickers, because you've got this little uh, T section, re thin reinforcement. They supply little stickers got to be far enough forward so as it doesn't let's do it this way so it doesn't clash with the white of the fin so probably reinforces it a tiny little bit as well uh, right it's time to work on the horizontal stabilizers using the little screwdriver I've just changed the light bulbs are a bit brighter using the little screwdriver we do this when you get to the end be very careful don't go too hard step 41 step 42 install the horizontal stabilizers I knew they were going to say that it means I'm gonna to have to glue it and walk away because they fit onto the little plastic tabs of the exhaust tube should we call it all I can do is glue them in and leave it I think so what I'll do is just put a little bit of glue on the tab little bit of glue and then more glue down the drop that in there sorry you can't see we've got quite a lot of glue squeezing out on the top there I'm gonna hit my finger and strike it along the there we are neatens it up I think I might just let that set a little bit before I do the other side. Um, I've got something to show you here. Uh, I mentioned earlier on I didn't like to see an empty cockpit. And da da, I found a pilot. And actually, what I found is two. I know when the red arrows are performing their. Um, aerobatics they only have uh, one pilot there's room for me as well I could go up be an idea wouldn't it to be in the back seat of a red arrow display goodness me that would be mind-blowing anyway what I was going to say was um, I didn't know researching this that each aircraft has an engineer attached to it for the whole of the flying season so there's nine engineers and that engineer stays with the aircraft and obviously the pilot as well <coughs> and they uh, will fly with the pilot from air show to air show so they get to have a nice backseat ride and um, therefore a red arrow would have two people in it I don't need that 
will have two people in it, two pilots. So I printed out, printed out a reverse image. I'm going to glue them together, cut it out, and that will then sit in the cockpit like that. Okay, I've glued the other tail fin on, and I've I lined it up with the dihedral brace, so they're equal both sides, although the plastic tabs on the uh, on the uh, plastic tube aren't quite aren't quite the same angle both sides. But never mind, you'll be okay. <coughs> so the pilots, I'm going to trim them out. And they're going to look great inside. Cut a slot in the cockpit and just glue that straight in there. Right, so I'll cut right down into that. How's that? I think that looks pretty good. Okay, grab your screwdriver and go down the aileron. Being very careful not to go too far to the ends. Uh, there's a fine line on, on the bottom here which you've also got to score. And this forms the aerofoil section. So now that will then bend over the dihedral brace. Just move you in to there. That will go in there, over the top, and then into the forward slot. And that seems to fit pretty well. Let's just offer that up. It goes back there, and into there, and over there, like that. A classic. Uh, no reason why we can't put that on, but there is one thing that looks horrible, and that is the dihedral brace being in plywood sticking down like that. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to colour that in in red now. Okay, so that looks better, doesn't it? Something else you could do if it worries you is the leading edge uh, is white. You could just run your pen down there, colour it in a bit. Looks better, doesn't it, just for being coloured in. Okay, uh, while well, I got it out again, I'll just do round the nose here a little bit. There's a little bit of white showing. It needs to go on the bottom of these lugs, and then it needs to go. There. So I'm going to put the back one in first and just bend it over the. Oops, hang on. Put the back one in first, bend it over the dihedral brace into the front one. Like that. But we've built a few of these uh, minimum RC models now, but I've got to say, I'm really enjoying this one. Really enjoying it. Okay, there's one wing. When you don't have to build the wings, it certainly goes together quick, doesn't it? It's looking fantastic. And along the dihedral brace, put the back end in first, over the top, and into the front. Well, I think that's okay. That looks equal both sides, so that's all we can do for the minute but while that is drying there's always something more you can do and there's two little filler pieces to cut out now these little pieces go just in front of the wing and actually for the color the edge isn't going to be glued just like that Right, like that. Intake port PS foam board.
is next. These have to be curved to go around there like that. And you curve them over the end of a bench or in the palm of your hand. This may bring that forward a bit. Be bent like that. Give them that little bit of a curve. Make sure you do an opposite one as well. Mirror image. Yeah, they're, they're suggesting that um, you do the bending like this over the edge, over the palm, palm of your hand inside. So you're just drawing it over like that. As long as you end up with it bent, that's all that matters. Doff it up to the wrong side. So that looks like that. Okay, we'll let that dry while it's drying. Intake port, right, okay. Bend the intake port component slightly. Method, press the part that needs to be bent, get your palm, place it in the edge of the table, slide and squeeze to create a curved shape. Put a kink in it in the box. So let's um, put a curve on that. Let's see if these are any longer than they are. Don't know what they're for. And then I'm also going to put it along the edge directly onto here. Come on, squeeze out. Just put this one at the back here, I think, to keep it nicely into the fuselage. bit of spread in there under there and then I'm going to bring that up slightly to be level with the top of that air intake like that and then the sticker will go on it nicely and we end up with something that looks suspiciously like an air intake <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, that's holding really well. So we'll let that, a little bit needed there, we'll let that set off. I keep saying that, and I keep saying this, just look at the next bit, look at the next bit. Now, things will have dried because I've been away for half an hour. Looking pretty smart, very smart in fact. Gorgeous, what a gorgeous shape. Right, okay, next thing is the stickers that go on the top of this. Awfully sticky, which is what you want. Panel lines nearly line up on this side, but on this side there. Trim up for excess portions of the vacuum form canopy as shown. It's visor to make a conservative initial cut, place the canopy on the fuselage for alignment, and then proceed with precise adjustments. Up at an angle. Right, let's have an initial offer up, see what we've got. The other side still want trimming. Oh, look at that, isn't that beautiful? It's interesting that the glue I'm going to use I could use Yuhu Pore, which is uh, designed for polystyrene. Really, I have got canopy glue in my in my um, drawer there, which may be a better job. I'll stick it on with canopy glue, and I'll hold it in place with little strips of masking tape. Uh, let's put it on at the back. There, steady down to there to be in one sort of swift movement. Install the aileron control horns. The other thing I'm going to do is to paint them red, so I'll do that now. Okay. 
and pop those out. Slots in the ailerons sometimes can be narrower than the plywood, but these aren't too, in fact they're perfect, so I'm just going to carry on and get them glued in. I think what I'll do is uh, make a little pile of glue up and just dip it in. Make a fairly good job of this. You don't want them pulling out. Trial fit them before you do fit them. Just to make sure that the slots are okay. They don't go in easily, just um, put the back end in first and sort of lock them in. And then they'll go in. Can also glue on the carbon rods underneath as well. I'll leave those for now though. Let me go this side. Take your time with this guys you can't rush it and it's worth trying to get it equal around the front and it's got a tapered end each end that goes from the join I wonder if I can put it on that join and just take it over see where it goes it goes from the kink at a forward angle Let's just sort of take it over there and see where it sort of ends up. It might be because I've got the side down too far. Maybe it's a good idea to put these on first and then the long ones. I'm going to go with that. It looks, it looks balanced each side, so I'll go with that. Okay, that's the cockpit finished. Wow, yes sir, looking very sharp. Cut out the bottom PS board to create a hollow. Oh, no, it'd be the front one's just going to be taped right over. The back one, I think, is going to stay open. That'll suck a bit more air in. 130mm carbon rods for use as tail control rods. Cut four pieces of heat shrink tube in, each 5mm in length to connect tail control rods and the wire clamp heads. So while I do all that, let me get all that set up and then I'll come back to you and we'll have a look see what I've done. I said you can come back when I've done this but I think this is quite important to show you my technique. It's, it, it's really difficult to get the push rods into the 5mm cut of silicon tubing. So what you've got to do is take your, take this, that clip, that one there, that's, which goes over the servo arm, pinch it very slightly together because they, they come, one of them actually was pinched together more than the rest, but you can see I've pinched it together just a little tiny bit. Slide the five millimeters of silicon tubing over the end. Get your piece of 13 millimeter, sorry, centimeter rod. Sand a small, take off the blunt cut edge. So you want to sand it into a little rounded end. Do both ends while you're at it. Then get a pair of pliers because you can't hold this because you'll push it straight into your finger. Then just bring that bit of tubing out just enough so as it's hanging over the end then you've got to put this through and put it into the tubing where the gap is and immediately the silicon has slid down the, the wire that's all right so I'm going to have another go and it's very easy to slide uh, push the rod through the side of the silicon so be careful of that so there you are, it's as simple as that. If you do it that way, then you'll be able to do it. Now they suggest you just super glue it because I don't think there's much to be gained from trying to heat shrink it anyway. So I'm just gonna super glue this on and that's your two push rods made up. You're only doing one end because the other end you do once it's on the aeroplane talking about. I'll show you a close up in a minute. But put it in like that get hold of that little arm 
and just move it to the other side of the control arm. This one is already at the correct side, so we'll slide that in. Now the hole it's got to go in obviously has a bit of wire in it now, so I'm not sure how easy it's going to, there should be room for two bits under there, that should hold it in. Don't know if you can see that guys, so I've got two push rods going into the outer server hole as illustrated on the instructions. And it's just a matter of lining it up and pushing it in. Sometimes when they trim the metal here you get a little burr on the end and it just prevents it from going in the hole. And I think that's what I've got there so I'm just going to give that a little file just to help it in. So let's try that again. You've got to be careful because the the uh, control horn is only glued in, so I'm going to try and steady that and work the wire in. And I'll tell you what else I'm going to do. I'm just going to open that hole up, which is something you might want to do before you stick it in. So I've just got a very thin pin here with a quite a fine point. I'm just going to put that in that hole just to open it up a little bit. And it says cut the control rod to length, but it's, it is perfect as it is. So now I'm going to cut a piece of tubing. I, I've got about eight or nine mil there, but I think I'll stick to about six. I'm going to slide it on until I've got neutral elevator. I can put a drop of CA on that and that'll hold that. Okay, so I've got the uh, push rods in and unfortunately um, the instructions say use the 60 mil post push rods. Well, they're only 55 long uh, and that five millimeters makes all the difference. So I've had to source another couple of pieces and cut them to 60. In fact, I gave myself another meat, a millimetre and made them 61. So they're in. There's also these little plastic protectors for the control horn, uh, which I fitted. Whether they'll be uh, beneficial or not, I don't know, but I'll put them on anyway. Uh, and so that, my friends, is, I think, uh, yeah, assembly complete. That's it. She's done. Um, I'll tell you what, shall we, shall we just test the control surfaces and fire it up maybe even. So I'm using my DX6i for this. I've got to test the C or G as well. They do tell me what it is. I might have to reverse it of course. Just pop the battery in there, and then I can test for CRG. In fact, the battery won't go all the way forward because of the length of the uh, wire. So hopefully that's enough. All right, let's have a look. Elons. Okay, well they're back to front. Elevator, of course, that's back to front as well. Okay, and motor. I hope it works. Of course it works. Lovely. So, um, that's it. She's ready, ready to go. It worked well actually when you look at it. Though. Well, about five mil each way. Um, I will just check for throws there and CG. Let's have a go at the CG. Uh, might have to do it upside down. Five millimeters in front of the wing score line. So uh, I say it's about right. Yeah, it's about right. That's with the battery as far forward as the 
lead will allow. So can't go any further forward than that, can I? Yeah, I've actually really enjoyed putting this one together. It's been great. So there we are then, guys. That's the Minimum RC Red Arrows uh, Hawk. All ready to go. Loved building it. Really recommend uh, the build. Beautiful. Really well thought out. And it's going to be great. I've seen a video online that Minimum RC have done. Hopefully mine will be even better. Can't wait to try it. All right. Give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video, whatever that may be. And thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. Bye.